Hey, we made it to Richard Forte Presents episode two. And today is a very big, special day for me here at RFP Media in Sweet 16 Studio because I have a guy who has such a long title that I'm going to let him say it himself. I can't memorize it. His name is Yura Monastime, and he is a director up at Canador College. And Canador is doing some really awesome things with post-production, media production, game production. I mean, there's so many things we want to talk about. Ladies and gentlemen, without any further ado, here is Yura Monastein from Canador College. Thanks for coming in, man. Very excited to be here. And it's academic director and business development for art design at Canador College. That is a mouthful. It is. It is. Right. What an interesting job. Oh, it's awesome. It's, uh, it's the job of a lifetime. It's something that I've been waiting for a very long time to get to this point. Yeah, well, congratulations Thank then you. for making it there. Thank you. Um, why don't you give the audience a glimpse of what that means to be the director of these things? Because there, I know from what I'm learning, because I'm always paying attention, how much you guys have going on up at the college and up and coming things. Um, I'd like you to kind of give us a, a quick spiel on what you want to highlight in terms of what your department is doing right now. Yeah, so the, the department is art and design, which includes all the media programs and uh, culinary and the computing programs. So probably about 10 to 12 programs altogether. And as you know, art and design is very close to my heart and close to your heart as well. So what we do uh, on the academic side is deliver the programs to train uh, future television, film, graphic design, music, post-production, uh, and other programs including culinary and the computing program. So it's our job to ensure that the students receive the proper training to be able to step out, which I see there are some Canada grads here as well, which is awesome. Thank you for that and it's to ensure they have the proper knowledge and training to step out and get that job. Well, you're, I always say that there's no way I would have had the courage to start RFP Media and establish myself in North Bay in the media business if it wasn't for what Canada has invested in. Because without that talent pool behind the camera right now that we have examples of right in the room, uh, there's no chance. Like There's no way that I think somebody like myself could pull off um, modern communications company that uses all those right. resources. It's so labor intensive to make this kind of art, this right. digital and, art. And people don't understand the amount of work that it takes to get to this point where people can look presentable on camera with all the technologies and new technologies. So at the college, we have state-of-the-art technologies that we integrate into the academic learning, as well create sandboxes for companies like yourself. So you have access to those technologies and to the students. For us, it's a gold ticket when a company comes in and says, hey, can I mentor your students? Can I give them experiential learning opportunities like you're doing here? That all is the gold ticket for us. Not only do we do the academic part, but we also allow our students to see a glimpse of what it's like to work in the real world before they actually graduate. Yeah, which is really important. And the real world is changing fast. Like now, obviously, we're wearing masks. We're in the full-blown epidemic lockdown situation. It's terrible. But, I mean, what it's done for us in our industry, right before you were here, you can see the mess we're in in the studio today, but it's a good thing. That's why I wanted to highlight it, because mm -hmm. it, it, there's, there's people need service, these services. And like you were saying before we went to air, you have some people that you have gone through your training that are usually working on other projects and now they're, they're, they're really working on Zoom calls. You know, and I think that's a key point, uh, Richard, because what we teach, and it's, it's difficult to teach resiliency, but I think COVID has forced us and also the students to realize how deep we can reach within ourselves and actually pull through these very dark days. You know, there is light ahead of the tunnel, over the last year, it's been very difficult, but through a lot of awesome people and great training and also delivery, we've managed to push through that darkness, the pandemic. And really, <clears throat> as you'll see this Friday, we have our gala. Mm -hmm. And the film students and the TV students and the graphic design post-production, all of our other programs, they've managed to develop content 
and work with the masks and the COVID uh, restrictions to develop some pretty amazing content. And that's what it's all about. It's telling those stories. It doesn't matter if you have a mask on or a mask off. A mask on makes it more yeah. difficult. Yeah. But at the end of the day, it's telling those stories, which is great to see. Right, and we can't stop. I mean, we have to keep figuring out how to, you know, I, I say we, uh, I always say my measure of success is how many jobs I've been able to create. That's personally why I'm doing this, is I, I always want to move back up north where I'm from to figure out how do we create the jobs that aren't just cutting trees and mining things. And boy, is creating media a labor-intensive thing and an important thing and a huge economic developer. Like, we have a film industry in North Bay. You've been part of seeing that industry develop. The college has been, I think, instrumental in seeing what North Bay has been able to do so far. And I know that in your position, you get to look forward and you get to see some of the things coming. Is there anything you can, you can share with us in terms of what you're seeing as the film industry is kind of establishing itself here? And yeah, I, <clears throat> excuse me. I, I think there's a great opportunity to create that third or fourth industry. Uh, you know, we have mining, we have forestry. It'd be nice to see the film industry uh, become a, a full industry uh, where we can have tra a trained workforce and also start employing hundreds and hundreds of people. In the next uh, five years, they're saying there's up to 10,000 new jobs coming into uh, Ontario just for the film and television industry alone. Wow. If we got a couple of percent of that, um, that's hundreds and hundreds of new jobs coming into the north. And you can see it now. I see sound mixers, I see graphic designers, uh, I see uh, set designers, I see producers, scriptwriters moving from Toronto into North Bay. And these people are not on small movies, they're on yeah. multi, multi million dollar movies and they're working from Northern Ontario, which is awesome. And that's what we need to take the film industry in North Bay to another level. And in terms of the future, I mean, the future is, I believe the future is bright for North Bay and what it has to offer. It's close enough to Toronto. We have the fastest internet in the country. We have one of the longest runways in uh, North America, mm -hmm. thanks to uh, our, our Nor NORAD friends. So I think all of that combines into a perfect mix mm -hmm. uh, for the film industry to move here. Yeah. I really do. And it would be the true Hollywood North. Yeah. It doesn't happen overnight, though, does it? Uh, it's, 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 a, it's a decade away, <laughs> but if we plant that little kernel, that little seed now, yeah. and, and we did that with the post-production facility, yeah. we're doing that with some other um, uh, initiatives. Uh, we're developing a visual effects yes. and an animation program, and all of those will come together, and you know people will realize North Bay as seeing they do have a wor workforce here. We can bring an animation company here, we can bring a film company here. All of those things will start happening, but first we have to develop that workforce. So what is the biggest challenge for us? Like, like really, what, I mean, because it's not all easy. Mm. It's, it's not all just positive. Right. You know, it is challenging, at least it has been for me. I yeah. have to say that as an entrepreneur, I've now been up and running for three years. If I would have realized how, well, I've been up and running for three years, but five years into sort of my project, I can't believe how much time it's taking and, and how challenging it really is. I mean, you hear that, but then it's another thing when you're in it. What are some of the challenges you're coming up to and how do you see us? Because, I mean, A, we're small, we're a little bit isolated. Yeah. Uh, you guys are the big player in town in terms of, in my opinion, uh, from what I've seen. Are, is there anything that, that you can... Uh, you can share with us that sort of, or, or, or if we were to show this to somebody like Vic Fideli, I mean, I'm sure all these guys know what our challenges are, but what, what are our challenges here to make it work? Um, I think our challenge is, uh, is marketing. Yeah. Uh, market that there are very qualified individuals and companies in Northern Ontario that can do this. Can do There's a gentleman we were talking about who is a Canada grad who's in Sudbury and starting a similar business like yours, yeah. um, I think it's marketing the North. Mm -hmm. That, you know, instead of paying uh, thousands of dollars 
tens of thousands of dollars for a space in Toronto, why not spend half of that and come to Northern Ontario and save some money, have a great workforce yeah. and help develop the workforce. So I think if the, I know the politicians know this, uh, some, of the, some of the negative parts are um, the amount of money that it's gonna take. Yeah. Uh, the workforce development, we really don't have a workforce yet. Yeah. Um, and just the distance, even though it's only three hours from us and you and I can drive that in a day and go to a meeting, yeah. it's a different perspective when you're in Southern sure. Ontario, right? You still have to bring your crew up here, you know, the big white trailers still have to come up and housing is still another issue, Yeah. right? Where are they gonna stay? Where are they gonna eat? Yeah. For one or two productions, maybe, but you start getting four or five productions in North Bay at the same time. Where are they going to stay? Where are they going to eat? Yeah, right. and and there's always rumors of a studio oh, being that, built. A big everybody wants a studio. Everybody that, wants the big warehouse. Yeah, and again, you have to be careful, uh, you know, and and plan that out properly. So you advertise, you market that. I mean, Southern Ontario is maxed out. Yeah. in terms of studio space. And even though the other ones are coming online, they'll still be maxed out in terms of space. So North Bay has a lot to offer. Yeah. Um, and it's, when I talk North Bay, I'm talking uh, pan Northern Ontario. Sure. So it's just not North Bay. I believe when, especially the college, our mandate isn't just North Bay, it's yeah. the area. Yeah. And I think it would help everybody, that everybody in the North has their little pieces that they have to do. Um, and North Bay, because of our proximity again, yeah, a stage would be awesome to have here, right? Yeah. It's just, it takes my, it takes money, yeah. it takes time, it takes people with passion and perseverance to keep pushing that through. Right? If somebody's, yeah, totally. If somebody's watching this and they're really thinking about Canador for their next training opportunity, so they're thinking of coming to North Bay to come to Canada, what is the sort of ideal target market type of student that comes here. Because I'll tell you what, I've had Thai from Taiwan, I've uh -huh. had Kevin from Bahamas, not Barbados. I, I see, yeah. I'm learning the globe. There's by, two B's, but the one's important. Yeah, exactly. Uh, Barbados, uh, we have B Bernardo from Brazil that yeah. have worked. I mean, I've had literally people from around the world who have come to Canada and have ended up working with me here, and it's been amazing. And I guess what I'm saying is, who is the sort of target market for a Canada or student these days? The, the target market is we want somebody with a passion. And that's really what we need. If the student has passion and a willingness to learn mm -hmm. with an open mind, then we are the school for them. We will, as we could see with the people in this room, we can turn, like I said, we have people coming in, they don't know the front end of a lens, right? Or they don't know uh, how to put a skillet on a stove, right? Or how to mix a music track. And I'm telling you, at the end of a month or two, it's amazing to see students grow and mature. That's what I love about my job. And if you talk to the professors, it's the students. They're there, we're all there because of the students. Mm -hmm. But at the end of the day, it's amazing to see them walk across that stage and get that piece of paper. And there's not a dry eye amongst all the faculty, yeah. including myself, when that happens. It, yeah. It's a magic moment, right? Because you're, you're giving somebody an opportunity to change their lives and go in a direction where they might have wanted to go for years and years and years. Right. Right? The totally. target, that's the target market. Uh, whether you're 17 or you're 57, yeah, right? If you want to change your life or you want to develop a career that you're going to have fun in and you have a passion in, then that's what we're looking for. It's a creative industry. And that's what I love so much about. You mentioned art in your title. There's art there. And to me, that's um, another word for art is meaning, mm -hmm. you know? And what's nice about creating media, we're creating, we're telling stories that create meaning or give us a sense of place that make us understand our life. 
what would you say for you? This is one of the last questions. So I mm -hmm. want something personal from you mm -hmm. here. Is what type of art? What type of you know art practice or what type of art really kind of still gives you goosebumps because you've been in the industry now a little while a i mean time. i know a bit of your background you've been in t you've been down south but yeah it, you know you've been around a while what still gives you goosebumps you know when i was much younger i was in new york at uh, a meeting and i was working for a television company and we were covering and we were standing on the line like most journalists do waiting for the politicians and this lady approached us, this black lady approached us, and she said, my, 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 the eyes and the ears of the world, mm. right? And I turned around and I go, you know who that was? I said, it was Pearl Bailey. Uh. And she said it like she cut right through you and meant it. And to this day, I'll never forget that because I feel that's what I love to do. I love to tell stories. Mm. I love to be... The way uh, a boss of mine described it, he said, every night you're going to have tens of thousands of eyeballs looking at your story. Yeah. So it's important that you tell the story the proper way. And that's, that's my motto that I take uh, through life, right? When I see something, I tell it like it is. Yeah. And in terms to answer your question, what I love to do is to tell stories, whether it's with a drone or with the camera, uh, or a microphone. I love to go out and record uh, life. Yeah. Well, I think Canador has an amazing story to tell. I'm mm. really, really grateful that you took time today to Thank come you. check out the studio because I'm so awesome. excited, you know, that uh, that we've come this far. But I also know it's just the beginning. It is. And and Canador's story is a big, big part of I think what will make our community's story work. And so, um, yeah, so, so it, maybe we could end it with a Canador story. Um, I, was, I was part of the team that created some ads for Canador last year. It was an amazing experience. And, and I guess what I would want to say is if we were to do a broad stroke highlight real story of Canador, what do you think that is? What do you think Canador really out there what's the canador story it's right now because there's so much changing like you talked you would even talk about the gaming just before the cameras were rolling we we're talking about different opportunities maybe you can't talk about it. maybe that's why we didn't talk yeah. about it. but there's so many things coming you know and there are and i know you're i know there's maybe some things you can't talk about because maybe they're not announced yet i right. i'm not sure but you've got a music program in there that I, from what i understand the music we got post-production we got a television and the reason i'm not mentioning them because i i don't want to forget one but there's post-production there's the tv program the film program the music program dramatic uh, arts the theater. art art uh, acting for stage and screen acting for stage and screen. Uh, there's the digital cinematography program uh, we have a visual effects program that's coming online next year and the culinary programs and also the computing programs so mm -hmm. cybersecurity program analyst all of those are very exciting and cutting cutting edge technology I think to answer your question I think it's about the people yeah and it's about connection to community mm -hmm. and i think when we connect with the community uh you see a synergy happening with that right um but the students is why we do it yeah it's it's delivering uh an academic delivery to students because it makes sense mm -hmm. to mm -hmm. do that well, I'm grateful you guys are in town. Keep doing awesome. what you're doing. Thank absolutely. you so much for Thank taking time. Thank you for time. having me. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And uh, we're going to leave it at that for now. So go check out canadorcollege.ca. That's correct. Go uh, track Yura down, send him an email, tell him you saw the interview and that you want to come to North Bay to be part of his program. <laughs> and uh, just thanks for tuning in, everybody. Thank thanks, you. Yura, for coming in. It was Thank really you. great. And keep pushing. Oh, yeah. We're, that's we're the, counting on The community is counting on It'll you. push. <laughs> thanks, <laughs> Richard. Thank you so much.